about a month or a month and a half ago, their internal report leaked and they had to admit, yes, Israel was involved in genocide and expansionism and just taking what they want. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's sad. Oh. It's and you know that's that's mainline news. I think that was covered in uh, the Times Online and the Guardian. We read the thing here. It doesn't make a lot of mainstream media in the United States, which is you know overtly pro-Israel with APAC and the rest of it. I don't know what it's like over in the UK. Did you see a lot of news about that there? Yeah, a fair bit. Yeah, we, uh, we not got as some much uh, here. footage. We mm -hmm. got some footage from inside Gaza as well, and mm -hmm. they're just completely flattened. You, the, there was this. Uh, seen over the horizon and there wasn't a building standing it was just rubble mm -hmm. so, no it's tragic man I, I mean i wish we could do more in the middle east but we have so much to clean up internally in both of our countries yeah the I know, Kingdom, totally. and the united states of america and now they're going to team up in this nle09 exercise and remember terrorist attacks are supposed to happen overseas before they come here and they're just going to try to stop them here so be aware go check out NLE09. That could be. See, the yeah, biggest I, I checked that out. I read that. Yeah. Oh, you did. You checked out NLE09. How do you it's feel about it? Um. Well, I mean, I, don't, I can't see anything. Uh. Well, I don't know. I'm confused. I don't know the. I don't. I don't know if we have a FEMA or an equivalent over here. No, but I would say out. that you're probably your MI5. Seeing that DHS is going to be involved with CIA, NSA, FBI, I would assume yeah. that you know the upper echelons of not only your police force, but your intelligence agencies are also going to be involved in this drill. And mark my words, they're going to ship a lot of those people into our country so that they can really blur the line internationally of what regulations we have to follow. I thank you for the call, Lauren. Let's go to, uh, let's go to Stephen in Texas. Stephen, you're on line. Yeah, hey, Jason. Um, How you doing? Good. Uh, well, I'll tell you right now, after uh, I had actually sent that clip to you, you played about that torture in an email today. Oh, did you? Uh, yeah, and I actually sent you another one. They're both from ABC News. Yeah, you sent me the Gingrich one. I read that one. I talked about it on the air earlier, and basically, yeah. you know, it's just more WWE politics. New Gingrich is outraged. He's outraged that Pelosi, you know, is saying this. Meanwhile, both him and Pelosi know damn well what's been going on at Guantanamo Bay and other places. They damn well know that we're torturing, and it's just false left right paradigm bullshit right. arnigans. Go ahead. Yeah, it's just what Jesse uh, Ventura said in the Obama deception. This is all show, just like the WWE after. They're enemies on the stage, and then behind the scenes, they're buddy buddy. And the hypocrisy, you know, and you saw this firsthand in that video uh, of the torture. Here's Bush, hand in hand with this guy from the UAE. And, uh, you know, they're not going to do anything about this. But the thing I'm thinking about is, you know, can Americans picture Americans called Blackwater doing that kind of stuff here in America? Because that's what we're heading for. Exactly. Exactly. And uh, I just wanted to bring up real quick two quick things. First of all, uh, I wanted to encourage you and everybody out there, there's an excellent site called 911busters.com. Mm -hmm. And that has an hour-long video on chemtrails. It's, I think, the best one out there. Uh, and, I mean, it's, it has even got really good special, you know, musical effects as it goes through. But it's called the Chemtrails video, video and it's 911busters.com. You need to check that out. It's just real powerful uh, for evidence of chemtrails. The other thing I wanted to bring up is I get a magazine called Acts and Facts from the Institute for Creation Research. And, um, you know, you remember that Alex in the past has covered what the eugenicists are doing, mixing DNA of animals and humans and coming up with these real weird creations in their lab. Chimeras. Chimeras, right. yes. Well, they have an article in here, I just did this May issue, it's called Human Ape Hybridization, a Failed Attempt to Prove Darwinism. And this guy, Jerry Bergman, I found this real interesting. He mentions this guy, uh, Ilya Ivanov, and apparently what this kid, guy did was he tried to ins artificially inseminate apes and gorillas and such, with, or actually human women, with the semen of apes and gorillas and simians to try and prove that evolution was true. Mm -hmm. And this is back in the early 1900s, and of course it failed, but the interesting thing this guy pointed out was that it was the Russian and British governments that actually funded this. And so I wrote a, an email to this guy today, and I gave him a bunch of links to what you guys are doing, and I told him, I said, you need to check this out based on the research you've got in this article and see that this is, you know, 
something that was basically, you know, it's nothing new. But, you know, I told him, I said, basically, I would dare to say that the ones that were really behind funding this were the Rockefellers and the House of Rothschild and the British royal family because, you know, they're doing the exact same thing now. So, uh, you know, it says in the Bible there's no new thing under the sun. And uh, just I just found it really interesting that here way back in the early 1900s there was a guy trying to do this kind of stuff. I'll definitely have to check it out. You know, one of the more interesting things, and I thank you for the call, Stephen, that I have seen, you know, supposedly on the pro-evolution debate. Now, you know, again, I do not believe species to species evolution. I've looked into it. I've not seen any evidence. However, within a species, there's no doubt that we, in, we evolve, and mostly due to our surroundings, our environment. Uh, again, I'll, I'll say it, you know, you've got black people in Africa because it's sunny all the time. You've got white people in Europe because it rains all the time, not a lot of sun. You know, Mexicans, Native Americans, you know, are a little less dark, you know, because we have seasons. And uh, one of the stories I wanted to cover today really quickly is that archaeologists are asking a big question after this uh, Indonesian, I think, it, yes, this Indonesian island, uh, they found all these little human beings. Uh, basically, they're asking if they're hobbits or not. And we're talking about three foot flat footed human beings. They had tools next to them, uh, you know, like uh, I just thought it was just a crazy little story. Let me read some of it. A miniature species of extinct humans nicknamed hobbits possessed unusual anatomical features explained by their complete isolation from the rest of humanity for thousands of years on their remote island home in Indonesia, studies have found. The tiny people who grew up to an adult height of no more than three feet astounded scientists in 2004 when a skull and partial skeletons were unearthed from a cave on the island of Flores. Radiocarbon dating suggests that the species Homo uh, floresinus had lived in and around the cave for tens of thousands of years before dying out about 17,000 years ago. The latest research into H. floresinus has found that there were flat-footed, long-toed creatures who could walk easily on two legs but would have found it difficult to run at speed. A separate study suggests that their very small heads, which were perfectly in proportion to their bodies, were the evolutionary outcome of living on such a remote island for so long. So I'm glad we had a call about evolution and that sort of thing, because I thought this was an interesting story and I wanted to cover it. On the other side, we're going to continue to take your calls, Leif, Leo, and more. PrisonPlanet.tv, Infowars.com, 866-582-9933.